up? How's it going? My name is Kylie. Welcome to my channel. I'm a film student studying at California Lutheran University and today I'm going to be breaking down the film Train to Busan. Oh, Andorra. I'm trying to film a video. This is Andorra. She wanted attention, so... Train to Busan came out in 2016 and it's rated at a 93%. Now in Train to Busan, a man, his estranged daughter, and other passengers become trapped on a speeding train during a zombie outbreak in South Korea. <gasps> so scary! This is starring Gong Yu as the father, he's our main character, and Kim Soo An as the daughter. I believe she was nine when they shot this film. There are also some pretty big roles filled by Jung Yu Mi. She plays a pregnant woman in this movie. Her role is pretty big. Really quick, I also forgot to mention Ma Dong Siuk has a very big role in this movie. He plays uh, Jung Yu Mi's husband. He's this big beefy dude that beats up all the zombies and like is truly one of the biggest saviors of this movie. You also might recognize Choi Woo Sik and he is from a little movie called Parasite. So right off the bat, this movie, stylistically, is beautiful. It is so beautifully shot. The coloring is really amazing. They use a lot of deeper tones, but they also have very small pops of color to create interest, and it's very dynamic, what you're looking at, very interesting and pleasing to look at. There's also a lot of storytelling in the way that it's shot, because our main character, this father, he's very self-involved, very materialistic, and his ego is also quite big, and this can be mirrored in the cinematography and a lot of the shots. He is center frame, we're looking up at him a lot of the time because sometimes it's in the perspective of his daughter, but he just always looks like this big presence, this big man who just thinks highly of himself, and the cinematography does a great deal of storytelling in helping us understand things like that. Now I'm going to talk about this father a little bit more. So like I mentioned, he's very big on material realism and another way that they show this in the movie is through product placement now normally product placement can be kind of annoying to me because it takes me out because you're watching the movie and then all of a sudden they're just holding a coke can and you see coca-cola like just right there and they're just ah uh, you know and you're like Am I watching an advertisement or am I watching a movie? In this movie, it's used to demonstrate his focus on materialism. For example, there's a shot of him coming out of his Audi and you just see kind of a lingering shot on the front of his car and you see that logo right there. He comes out of it and he like picks like a speck of dust or something off of it. And you realize, okay, this guy cares about his car. He cares about the brand of his car. We get it. And another moment, it's his daughter's birthday and he buys her a Wii like I do care about you, daughter. Look at this expensive gift I got you. And she already had one. So right off the bat, he's not a very likable main character. And my initial thought was, okay, I mean, at least this is setting us up for him to have a nice character arc. It's not super original because a lot of times in movies like this, in action movies, you have a bad dad who eventually by the end has gone through real life-threatening experiences with his daughter, son, whatever. And then by the end, he's like, wow. I need to be a good father. So I was like, okay, all right, that's good for setting up a character arc. Now I don't wanna spoil the ending, so I'm gonna continue talking about that a little bit later. So let's move on to my next topic. The suspense in this movie is great. One of my favorite ways that they chose to build suspense was in the very beginning, when we're first being introduced to this virus and the zombies, one of them gets on the train with them, obviously. And this little girl, Sue Ann, she has to use the bathroom, but her dad is asleep. So she gets up, she goes to the bathroom, that one's full. She heads to the next car over. That one is full as well. So she starts to head to the next one. And what we can see, but what this little girl doesn't know, is she is getting closer and closer to this zombie that has boarded the train. And her dad is asleep. So it's very slow. It's a really slow buildup to when our main characters first see the zombies and first react to them. So it's a really effective tool in getting your audience to be just sitting on the edge of your seat like she's getting closer to the, oh my god, and he, oh, he's asleep, he doesn't know where she is, and she's getting closer to it, and she doesn't know. So that was very effective, because after that, a lot of the action gets started, and then it just kind of keeps rolling, like, you don't get a lot of breaks in the movie after that, so I love that in the beginning, they really drew out this, this suspenseful buildup. Next thing I have to praise for this movie is the body horror actors. The people that played the zombies in this movie, whether they be extras or they were hired specifically for their body acting and things like that, I don't know. I have seen plenty of zombie movies and I think that this is one of my favorites simply because 
the body acting was very believable to me and it was exaggerated, yes, but not over the top to where it was cheesy or anything like that. It was genuinely pretty frightening. The special effects with the makeup and the way that they made them look, um, again, not super unique, but frightening. And I know I'm going back to talking about the cinematography here, but one way that you view these horror actors is through these crazy shots. They're like slow-mo of the action, and all these angles are just kind of unexpected, and it really, really reminds me of the Kingsman movies, because in a lot of the action shots of Kingsman, they're slow motion, and they're like doing whip pans around the action and stuff like that, and there's a little bit of this in this movie, so if you're a big action fan, I think you would really like it, because there are also a lot of moments where you got guys beating up zombies and fighting with zombies and stuff like that, so it's a lot of fun if you like action as well. So speaking to that, there's something for everyone in this movie, I think, there are also a lot of really heartfelt moments. There's some moments of levity, a little bit of comedy. One thing, however, that was not really for me in this movie were the moments that were supposed to be heartfelt because during some of these moments, I can, I'll talk a little bit more about that when I get into the spoilers, but during some of these moments, I would actually tear up because they felt very genuine and I was very connected to these characters. I related to a lot of them. So I start to tear up and then they would just drag on so long to the point where it got really cheesy and they had this weird like kind of soap opera type music playing just like really really cheesy so i'd start to tear up and then they would just dry up immediately <laughs> Now I realize that stylistically that might be what is preferred in Korea because this is a Korean movie and I'm just more used to American movies. So that's really just a stylistic preference. It doesn't really impact the movie too much. It's just something that I didn't enjoy as much as the rest of the movie. One of my favorite things about this movie, however, is that it forces you to really think about the ethical questions that they're posing because there is a moment when you have this group of people like there's a pregnant woman a child an elderly woman among a few others and they're trying to get into this cart that is safe it's the cart that's full of the most people that have not been infected and they've kind of barricaded themselves in there and they're not letting them in even though they can't tell if these people have been bitten they can't tell if they're infected or starting to get sick they look perfectly fine and they're asking for help and they are not letting them in and so you kind of wonder if you were in that situation, would your humanity dictate you or would your fear? So it's really interesting. That's just one small example. There are many moments where you question people's actions, but then it makes you think, would I, would I have acted the same way? And you just don't know until you're in that situation. But what I will say is a lot of the situations were pretty similar to what is going on right now with the COVID-19 pandemic situation. For example, in this movie, all that the men in suits care about is their stocks and business. And even though there is a literal outbreak around them, there's infected people on the train cars surrounding them. It's happening all around them. They're getting on the phone and being like, yo, what, what's the deal with our stocks? How are they looking? And you're like, you good? There's even one moment where this main character leaves his daughter alone and he goes into like the next car over to take a business call and you're like, dude, you're aware of what's going on and you just left your like little daughter alone? I mean, not alone alone, but she's with strangers. I mean, it, which is very similar to the fact that in America, <laughs> the government just whipped out $1.5 trillion out of thin air to uh, save the stock market or whatever. I don't... <laughs> like couldn't we have spent that money on getting tests to everybody or I don't know and then people are like the economy and I'm like well mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what else is bad for the economy um millions of people dying there's also a specific character in this movie that really riles up the main group that will not let these people through and into their car and it really only takes one person to be like they're infected can't you see and rile up everybody else because people tend to match the energy that's around them if there is panic other people will panic and so what's happened in america right now is everyone is going out and buying all the toilet paper and buying all the pasta and canned goods and not really leaving much else for the other people that need the food. So on that note, there will be a link to Feeding America linked down below because really any donation helps even if it's a dollar, five dollars, I don't care, just, just gonna put that out there. Another striking similarity is the fact that in this movie, the South Korean president is really undermining the situation and he's like, 
it's all under control, don't worry about it, the military is, is handling it. Does that, uh, remind you of anybody? Okay, I'm done being political, just had to point that out because the similarities are very eerie. Now, let's get into spoilers. So many people died in this movie. So going back to the dad, I thought, okay, so we have this terrible dad. One of two things can happen. One, he will continue to be horrible throughout until some dire moment in which he needs to sacrifice himself to save his daughter. Two, he fights his way through, protects his daughter, slowly comes to the realization that family is more important, and he lives, and he and his daughter will have a much stronger bond till death do them part, whatever, I don't know. And uh, both of those things happened. Now that was infuriating. I, I think that it's cool and fine when a movie kills off its main character because most movies are too afraid to do that. So I thought, okay, cool. But also, <laughs> this man really redeemed himself and all his daughter wanted was to have a dad that was there for her. Finally he is, he finally understands it, he realizes it, he redeems himself, and then he dies. And this is one of those moments, this is one of those moments where I was tearing up because he was crying. She was like, daddy, don't leave me. And he had to because he got bitten saving her. And then it just dragged on so long. And there was this really weird cheesy montage when he died of him like holding her when she was a baby, which like in theory is sweet. But when you add on top of that, the cheesy soap opera music and stuff like that, it was just like, so anyways, you have a lot of protagonists in this movie and almost all of them die. And you had this whole train full of people die. This whole team of baseball players die. You had all these people you were rooting for die. And only two of them survive, the pregnant woman and the child. And yeah, if you had to choose two people, you'd probably want it to be them. But because so many people died, I would have been okay with maybe like four to five people surviving. I think that that would have been fair, especially the dad. Another very small thing that bugged me about this movie, which is really, really stupid and really petty, is that the pregnant woman held onto her purse the entire movie. I don't know how many times they ran from zombies, but it was a lot. And the fact that she held onto her purse was like, I, I mean, it was a cross strap body. Maybe that's, that's another lesson we take away is to wear cross body purses. Oh. Anyways, I'm done with spoilers, so what do I rate this movie? I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10. Now, I am ticking a couple points off of things that I was mentioning earlier in my spoilers and also because of like the cheesiness. So did I like this movie? Yes, absolutely. Great movie. If you're interested in watching movies about like viruses and contagion and stuff like that, you're one of those people that during this pandemic for some reason wants to watch something like that, this is the movie for you. Also, it's a Korean film and Korean films are generally really well done. And if you haven't watched a lot of international films, I encourage you to expand your palette. Now, how did this movie make me feel? Boy, was I on the edge of my seat and you will be too. So this movie made me feel stressed, um, sad, anxious, all the good things, all the good things that you want a thriller to make you feel. Now, what did this movie make me think about? Oh, I kind of got into that stuff earlier, got a little bit political, but yeah, it just made me think about humanity as a whole and how we're gonna get through this actual real life pandemic and where we're gonna come out on the other side, you know, will capitalism rear its ugly head again? Will the economy survive? Who knows? I'm trying right now to support small businesses and keep them afloat, you know, order from your local restaurants, things like that. Just support the people around you. This is the time to reach out, to care for one another, to do what you can to help others because a lot of people are struggling, okay? Everyone's struggling. We're all having to adjust and just, just please be a good person right now. <laughs> All right, well, if you enjoyed this movie review, definitely check out my other ones. I'll link a couple of them below. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I catch you on the next one. Bye.